Well, uh, I uh, was involved in a study called the Veteran Athletes Heart Study, uh, where we recruited 152 uh, veteran male and female uh, athletes with no confounding cardiovascular risk factors. And all of these athletes uh, ended up having uh, quite comprehensive cardiac tests, uh, including an ECG, a 24-hour heart monitor, a cardiac MRI, a CT angiogram. Um, and they were uh, matched to healthy, uh, non-athletic controls. And what we found was that uh, the athletes, and in particular the male uh, uh, veteran athletes, uh, just wanted to point out that all these athletes were over the age of 40, so they were veteran athletes. Um, they all had a higher burden of arrhythmias, uh, such as non narrow complex tachycardias, atrial fibrillation, flutter, uh, sinus pauses, and uh, alarmingly, non-sustained ventricular tachycardia. And uh, we went further to try and investigate what the cause of these arrhythmias was by subjecting all these individuals to cardiac MRIs. And the MRIs found that uh, they had a higher burden of fibrosis. And in particular, this type of fibrosis called subendocardial fibrosis, which is uh, linked to atherosclerosis. And then finally, well, all of these subjects ended up having a, uh, a coronary angiogram. And the coronary angiogram, uh, again, alarmingly showed that in around 16% of male uh, veteran athletes, there was a higher burden of atherosclerosis. So in summary, what we found out is that uh, chronic high endurance exercise in a proportion of male uh, athletes who are over a certain age does promote uh, atherosclerosis, scarring and arrhythmias. To be honest, I think it's important to remember that the benefits of exercise. I think the benefits of moderate exercise are indisputable. And I, I certainly don't want to be the one who's scaremongering. Uh, but the benefits of moderate exercise we know very well. If you exercise regularly, you have a 50% risk reduction in adverse events. You uh, have favorable blood pressure, lipid profiles, and you live three to six years longer than someone who doesn't exercise. So I think to say that exercise, too much exercise is bad for you, I think that's very controversial. But I think too much of anything in extreme may not be good for you. And I think uh, exercise is probably not too dissimilar. Both myself and researchers from other uh, departments have tried to answer that. I think the data from our research would suggest that you would have to do a phenomenal amount of exercise per week in order to see some of the levels of atherosclerosis we saw in the study. Um, for example, you would have to run uh, the average of around a marathon a week to start seeing an increase in atherosclerosis more than the sedentary population. It's important to remember that this is a cross-sectional study. Uh, in order to have uh, clinical implications, I think one does need to have follow-up data uh, on, these, on these athletes. Uh, but I think it does, in a way, it does raise questions. And I think it probably raises more questions than, an than answer questions. Uh, but it might have, in the future, implications about how we screen uh, elder elderly athletes uh, who engage in high intensity exercise. We, we uh, hope to uh, follow up these individuals uh, and try to get a clear idea if they've got any uh, very um, strong, uh, hard cardiovascular endpoints. Uh, and we want to actually look at the female veteran athlete in a lot more detail. I mean, in our study, there was only around 50 or so uh, female veteran athletes compared to 106 male veteran athletes. So what we want to do is have a, a larger cohort to understand the female veteran athlete a bit better as well.